good afternoon to all uh, thank you for joining this presentation i'm not sure how much all you people will be able to benefit from this presentation but i'm sure that you will have some kind of idea of what are things going on and what are the tools students can work on to improve themselves like that so at the end of the presentation some may not like the projects some may like the projects uh, that doesn't matter uh, if at all uh, if you get an idea uh, that is more than uh, sufficient for me the idea of uh, giving this presentation is that you have you have your vacation right now and a lot of time will get wasted i want you you yourself to equip yourself with some tools or if you already know the tools then you can implement those tools in in some of the projects if possible uh, if you like the projects also uh, this projects may not be very complicated project they are simple projects according to me it's simple project no those who know the tools they can easily do it and later on you can expand this knowledge into some other project the idea is like when you are working on actual live projects then only you will face lot of uh, obstacles uh, when you face obstacles then you look ways and means to overcome that obstacles then you get in depth knowledge of that particular software that is how i have learned many software i am from mechanical engineering and irrespective of what project i have done for final year i used to work on small small things which my friends used to ask uh, and clear them and uh, i have worked from the simplest project to very complex projects simplest projects like i don't know whether you heard about for example a beam bending problem mechanical engineers will be knowing uh, a beam is subjected to load what happens to the beam that is a very simple problem when you start Uh, FEM analysis, FEM analysis means finite element analysis. If you start FEM analysis, simple problem will be a cantilever beam subjected to so. Then I have done uh, simulations like uh, tsunami wave impact on concrete structures. So from small thing to very complex uh, simulations, I have done. That is not just like that. I have started a very complex one. Small small projects I build. Then from the small small projects, all the knowledge. Uh, uh, cumulatively i applied in a larger project so that is how you can take up this initiative that i have taken if you are interested you can work on this or or you can you can uh, think about your own idea and start working on that project i don't have absolutely no problem there is no mandate that you have to come to me or there is no mandate you take that this project and it has to be worked under me you take this idea from this project and you work under anybody but the product has to come that sir and it has to help Uh, those who are using such things that's the idea of giving this uh, previously i also i circulated uh, these titles to people but unfortunately the titles were not reaching to people uh, whether there is some communication gap something was happening so it was not working out that's why i started the student corner uh, so that the communication goes to the entire batch of student and those who are interested can take it up that's left up to them but the pro the ideas and the information should reach to people that's the idea behind starting the student corner and uh, around 2300 students are there in that and you can see now you how many times i have been communicating about the student corner still 300 students are yet to join that is the difficulty in communicating to so many people <clears throat> so i hope uh, this presentation will be useful for you i just share my screen i have listed down some of the projects whatever simple things you will be able to work out that's fine for me and the thing is uh, many of the projects which i listed here ready made softwares are available so what is the use of we doing the software once again the thing is the ready made software which are available either we have to pay for them or it's very very complex okay somebody has to be trained in the software i want people to build uh, a simpler project works ideally it should work without internet it should work on windows platform or it should work on your android mobile like that it should be a freeware which we can give to schools and colleges uh, there should not be financial burden for them uh, like that so some of the things one by one i will start explaining this time tabling i hope you are able to see my screen if somebody can respond whether you are able to see my screen or not yes sir okay now 
this time tabling is very simple the project is simple but uh, implementation becomes very difficult because of the resources which has been available okay so there is one one subject called operation research or operation management where you are focusing on um, using scarce resources optimally okay that entire field deals with that similar so some of the concept will be used here so time tabling here what we want you students to do is develop a software which can do time tabling for your classes for the college for any school okay so if you see a typical time table person who is working in our college okay i'll show you how he works and i want you to give a solution uh, for that okay so now if you take a class time table it's something like this okay you have the subject code the subject name and the faculty handling that for each subject depending upon the credit here you can see i think you will be able to see if it's a four credit course then four lecture hours should be there if it's a three credit course three lecture hours is there lab means two slots like that so the input to the software should be subject code subject name faculty handling and the number of hours required for that particular code i'm going to explain a very simple way once you step into the project then we can explain the constraints and all per se it appears to be simple but it is not simple it is very complex okay so this you should be able to do for different classes or different uh, year students like this you will be able to should be doable so the basic principle is same for a three credit subject three hours for a lab two hours for a four credit subject four hours then some but some subjects will be requiring tutorial sometimes some subjects will be a lab integrated course so all the constraints should be taken into uh, account and you have to do now while you are doing there is the personal time table see these these are all the faculty available in uh, mechanical department there are 18 faculty um, a time table officer or time table in charge has to individually create this time table for them depending upon the class time table which is already shown you now if he or if the time table in charge wants to cha make a change in a particular time table he has to go to the class change it come to the faculty then he if he wants to change this hour he has to look who else is taking here there should not be any overlapping of sections overlapping of classes for example he would have put for example this rrk person he's put monday first hour he should not go somewhere else also example rrk uh, monday first hour he is going to uh, say fifth semester okay then in sixth semester's time table also rrk should not be there in the first hour so he has to manually check all these things and kind of finally come up with the uh, time table this is a this is the time tabling project okay it's it it appears simple but it is not simple a lot of constraints are there okay because uh, what happens is when the time table is being uh, time table in charge is being asked to do the Uh, time table sometimes lab will not be available sometimes classroom will not be available some faculty will say they will take only second hour some faculty will say they don't want theory in the afternoon session like that so many constraints will be there the faculty in charge the time table in charge to has to keep all the constraints in his mind and do this work and if he misses one of them then the time table goes wrong so a lot of rework and the time table cannot be released on time so many complications are there so if you are interested i want you to take up this project uh, it, this can be expanded uh, it can be expanded to schools many schools may be wanting it of course it can be done manually if the number of sections and number of subjects number of teachers are less but uh, if it is a big college like us it takes a lot of time and effort now when i did research in the uh, internet there are softwares available like here i downloaded a time tabler demo okay uh, that is true but for this we have to pay and how many schools or colleges will be willing to pay i don't know like like this particular uh, software there are so many uh, softwares available but we are not using many schools are not using one may be financial constraint another may be we have to train the people so it should be simple it should be cheap and it should run on any platform it should not be too much internet dependent okay so you see here this also requires a school structure five days into six periods we also have five days into eight periods we have subjects we have classrooms of course 
this itself is a separate project rooms and classes okay teachers so basic input is the structure of a timetable subject teachers and additional constraint like how many subjects should have how many hours in a week how many labs should be there so it's not that this project this software is not available in market is available but i want you to work out so what is the use of you working on a thing which is already available you get the experience you know how to uh, get over constraints you know get a, how to uh, link two different softwares or two different applications you know how to customize things like that so that is the reason why i want you to do it and of course our college doesn't have this one so it will be good if you can do that shall i go to the next one any discussions we can have it later once i finish all the explanation we can have the discussions later we will split to the uh, number of people who want to take up the project then we will do is that clear Shall we go to the next one? Yes. So sir. Next one is next one is question paper formatting. So I want to show you some question. I hope you would have seen the question papers now, which is coming in colleges. In our college, it has a specific format. Okay. So each subject, each subject has something called CEO. Have you heard about this? So each subject has unique CEOs. There's a code. There is a subject name. There is a semester. There is a department. There is a year in which it is happening. There is a time. There is a maximum marks. So all these things has to be formatted. One one mistake a faculty does, the entire formatting goes wrong, on or people don't understand the question like that. So what I want you to develop is a software which can format. What the uh, what the faculty will do is he will simply enter what is the subject code, what is the subject name, what is the duration. What are the maximum marks? What are the CEOs? Then he should be able to enter the question. He should be able to select a CEO associated. CEO means course objectives associated with the question. There is a marks associated with the question, and there is a BTL level that is Bloom's taxonomy level associated with each question. That much only he should he or she should enter in a form or an application, and it should give in a format like this. Like with all the headings, footer, header, all those things required should be given, including one table at the bottom. Appears simple, but it is not as easy as it appears. So, that is the. This is the definitely this will be the requirement of many schools and colleges, because formatting and all takes sufficient time when we are doing the project. Is the second one clear? If I, if I'm going a little fast, if you want clarification, you can ask me. I will explain one thing. This second one is very simple. Faculty should enter the basic details of the subject. He should enter the questions, and a click of a button, it should be formatted. Definitely, software should be available. You have to find out what are the tools. Already, I told you in the mail that I'm just a customer. I can give you the requirements. You should come up with the tools and solutions. There could be financial implications. There could be technological implications. There requires a server requirement. All those things I don't know. I am a customer. If you tell, I will say whether I'll go for it or I'll not go for it. But this is my requirement. Is that clear? Then the third one is the classroom management or lab management. What I mean by that is, at the beginning of each semester. We will be doing classroom allocation. See which uh, which batch of students should go to which classroom. OK, if we have sufficient number of classes, then there is absolutely no problem in doing this manually because we have to work around some 50 sections. These are all sections available and we have. Blockwise. What are the rooms available and each room capacity we have? OK, so what I'm going to have is the sections and their strength. The classrooms and their capacity. If I'm able to give that, it should give me an allocation. Doing this allocation when the number of classes equal to number of classrooms, it's easy. I can do it. No problem because 50 odd sections I have to deal. It's relatively easy. But if the classroom classrooms availability is less and the number of sections are more, 
then I should have a software which checks the timetable of the class and see which classroom is free. For example, if a particular say computer science second year is going for a lab that time classroom will be free. So the software should be able to detect which classroom is free and should allocate to a classroom uh, section which is not having class. I hope you got the idea. So if if the number of classrooms are equal to number of sections, then I have no problem. I can do it. Uh, but the problem happens when there is a scarce resource. I already told you this operation research or operation management or any industry you, you go. They want to use minimum resources, maximize the profit or minimize the loss. That's what they want. The entire the one line agenda of any company or organization is maximizing the profit. If that has to be done, then the resource utilized should be less. Even if it comes to nature, we want to get maximum yield, but the resource available is less. How to do it? That's the one line agenda. Some people are already working on this, but I am. Uh, but still I want uh, some more more sincere students to work on this particular project. That is classroom management or lab management. We also have a lab management uh, thing. Same thing applicable to lab. We have to list at the beginning of the semester list. What are all the sections which requires lab when they want which slot they want? Then we have to list the number of labs available and we have to allocate them such that there's no clash or overlapping. Is that clear? See all these things see I was going I was thinking about it. How these things softwares will be a this will be available good for students. I was thinking how it will be useful for them. See anything if you go outside the world, it is data how you read the data and how you present the data. That's all whether you go to a supermarket or you go to a medical uh, hospital or you go to a college. It's all data in the form of Excel sheets. You ask your parents. And those who are working in the majority of the people will be working on Excel sheets. They will be downloading a lot of data. They will be um, uh, assimilating it, separating it, uh, making graph, pie chart, scatter diagram like that. So many things they'll be using, but the data is an Excel sheet or some tabular form. You will call it SQL or you will call it Excel or you've got Power Automate or whatever. The data is an Excel sheet. You want to do it. If you if you recently observed in YouTube, I don't know whether you observed that in YouTube. Have you observed? Uh, if you if you scroll over this time bar here, you can see some graphs coming. Have you observed people? Anybody has observed that? Has anybody observed that a small graph coming? Have you observed that? Next time you can just see when you are going through YouTube. OK, mm. you can see a small uh, graph appearing indicating that how many users have actually gone to that particular point. It's again collecting data and presenting it on one some way. So many users would have clicked at a particular timing. Collect all the data and presented in the graph. They have used different tools. That's all. That's why this project which I'm listing is not it's not it's not going to be wasted. It's definitely uh, usable or the knowledge that you gain from this project is definitely usable in some other place. OK, next one is exam scheduling. It's similar to timetable scheduling. Uh, different branches will have a different number of subjects and at the end of the semester we have to schedule their exams OK on a particular date. For example, CAC is having five. Uh, five subjects, so in calendar five. Dates has to be blocked and that is for CAC then for similarly for the EC, assembly for mechanical EI like that. So the data is the number of subjects, the codes output should be the date on which the exams can be done, whether uh, forenoon or afternoon. That is exam scheduling similar to timetabling then have a OD management portal or advisor portal. Why this OD management is very important is a lot of work. Our energy is taken away from faculty advisors. I don't know whether how, how, how you will uh, whether you know it or not.
So at the end of the semester, a class advisor, okay, uh, sends a OD, okay, a OD list that has to be updated by the faculty in AUMS so that you your attendance will be taken care. I just I'm just looking for a typical OD list sent by a class advisor. So this is a OD list, OK? Uh, the registration number, the name of the student, department, if he has attended a placement, then the date on which he has attended and the time on which he has attended. So this is received from, this is received from CIR. So they have an Excel sheet. So from this Excel sheet, uh, the class, for example, I'm a mechanical department class advisor. I will extract only mechanical department like that. Uh, somebody else will be submitting some other OD list. I'll just show. Maybe they will be submitting in terms of uh, a PDF. From the PDF, we have to make a list. Okay, so different faculty give it in different format. It's very very difficult. So there has to be a management. There has to be a portal where the faculty. Uh, faculty's work is very simple where he or she can select a student registration number will already be loaded in terms of Excel sheets. So he or she should select uh, the registration number. So when he or she selects the registration number, all the things will become automatic. Name will be automatic. Branch will be automatic. OK, then one finally one calendar should be there. There the faculty can able to select the date on which the student has gone on OD and there has to be a, a remarks for entering whether it is a medical leave or whether it's a placement or whether it's a Kalakriti activity or a club activity and whether it's afternoon or forenoon or full day. So what happens is that if you are having a portal where individual faculty can not individual faculty faculty advisor can enter all the details. The report becomes very easy. The report can be downloaded and given to faculty for updating. Otherwise, the list which we get, OK, it's little difficult for us to uh, do it. It comes each faculty will have their own uh, formatting and it becomes really difficult for us to do. And it takes away a lot of our time. OK, and. Uh, If you. A faculty advisor in this college or any college will have see this is the list of activities the faculty advisor does in the semester. So many activities said many of the things can be automated. So if something a small application or a software where we can automate certain uh, work of a class advisor, then it will be very, very helpful for us. So. So these these projects are all I'm, these are the things which I have faced as problem and can be automated and it takes a lot of man hours and when it takes uh, human intervention, then a lot of errors will. So in order to remove the errors to reduce the man hours and we to have uniform uh, formatting and all I want this each department will have so many of so many work like this. You can approach faculty and you can ask them whether they want whether you you want them to uh, so you want them uh, certain work to be automated. They will give you ideas, so it's not necessary that you have to work under me. You can go to anybody any or uh, take this idea work under somebody. If that product comes out, I'm absolutely happy. I the only idea is you should use your time effectively. Honestly speaking, you know how much time. Students are wasting in hostel or home. Simply in front of mobile or laptop or in TV. A lot of time is getting wasted. So if you want to avoid that, then your mind has to engage in something positive. And this is a chance for you to engage your mind positively. Then course tracking. 
uh, registration is a small software which is required for me. OK, I'll just show you what I do. Each semester I collect data students who are failing whether they want to register for a particular course. OK, so this is a student wants to register for a particular subject or the subject name and who's a faculty. So my software should have a faculty master list, subject list master list and student list. So on my desktop I should be able to select the student subject faculty. Now this entire thing is manual. Students fill the form, give it in my office, whether they write MEE or CSE or EC, God alone knows many students. They write the wrong subject code. They write the wrong subject name. They write the wrong faculty. If you want to remove this, it has to be automated. So I should have a database where I have a student list, subject list, faculty list. I should see the registration form and should be able to select and save in another Excel sheet and download it like this. So this sheet which you're seeing on my screen is not automatically done. This was manually inputted sent to faculty sent to students for checking rechecking correcting so many things has happened so this is input to the exam cell this is input to aums team for conducting exam for creating classes this is re-registration alone i have contact course in contact course additionally i have to take payment reference payment date etc then i have additional slot there also i have payment date etc so some kind of I think uh, I, I did, did some uh, uh, small research on this. What can be done like MySQL and PHP will serve better. Uh, I felt I just uh, I just. Uh, uh, downloaded also and started working on it. Uh, PHP and MySQL. So if you want, you can work on that too. <clears throat> so drone related, I have uh, one one team which is working on a drone project. OK, uh, they already fabricated the drone. It's a mechanical uh, final year student. They, I want some people to use this drone to effectively do something like data collection or do some studies like in deep learning or machine learning. So what? So the basic drone is ready. You retrofit or you fit something to that. Use the drone for studies. Use some applications like deep learning, machine learning or artificial intelligence and see what can be done using that drone and can be nicely presented as a final year project or uh, develop a project which can be of benefit to society. That is drone related. Next is project. Uh, sorry, progress card dispatch. We are dispatching currently for 2500 students for each event. There are uh, periodical test one, periodical test two and uh, end semester results. So three into 2500. That will be 7500. Postal we are doing in a semester that will be 15000 couriers or post in a year. I feel it's a it's a huge waste uh, of sending hard copy because of the so much technological improvement which has happened. So I want to at least at least for those parents who want or are OK with soft copy. I want to send soft copy. It cannot be done manual. It has to be done at the click of a button. You have a folder in which all the progress cards are there. And I have a Excel sheet where all the data of the students are there. Click of a button. The software or application should pick the right. Um, PDF file, send it to the email ID. That is first step. I don't want it to be sent to mail ID because many people don't see the mail. I don't know whether a tool to send it to WhatsApp is there. If there, please come and tell me how I can do it. So I have a folder which has all the progress cards and I have phone numbers or email IDs to which this progress card has to be sent. Ideally, this progress card should have a password so that the data is secure. Nobody can see others progress. Only the parent can see the words details. So these are some of the projects I have. Then I have a, a Android app development project also where 
uh, I have a friend working on this app. He has already built the app uh, by outsourcing to somebody here, but now there's a bug and some more enhancements he wants to do. Uh, so if somebody has knowledge of Android, Android app development and they can, they can work on source code, the source code will be given to the student. But the problem is uh, this uh, music app is my friend's uh, intellectual property. So you cannot misuse it. You cannot post it or somewhere you cannot give it to others. It's kind of a work where you can improve your knowledge, uh, but you cannot give this app to somebody else or you cannot put it in Play Store or something. You can build your own app based on the knowledge that you get, but he or he cannot give it to you just like that. Okay, because he is using it for a spiritual purpose and he don't want that app to be misused for any reason whatsoever. So if, if you are having Android app development knowledge, you can work on source code, you can fix some bugs and you can do some enhancements in this app. I don't, this app is not available in uh, Play Store now. I have to give you that. So if at all you can, really sincere students who really want to work on that without any expectations, only for the matter of gaining knowledge. If you want to work, then you can opt for this one. Then I have, I'm also developing a yoga app. Some other students are also working on that yoga app. I want a custom uh, app which is custom, uh, can customized. Mm, if you can come over to me, if you if you really want to work on it and you're really sincere, I can explain that uh, to you. Uh, so, a lot of yoga apps are available, but I want essence of few yoga apps in one app, and it should not be complex. It should be very simple. Okay, it should not take so much memory. It should it should be very very flexible. I have examples of that apps, and I want. Uh, mm, uh, to say the essence of all those one two three or abc apps in one app so if you have knowledge um, this is definitely marketable this is uh, definitely marketable okay uh, if you if you take my idea and you you develop the software and if you use it in the right purpose that is also absolutely fine for me <clears throat> okay so like this uh, i'm i'm open if you are able to you are bringing some idea you can explain to me and I will just see how it fits into our college. OK, um, then we can roll out for some of the projects. Uh, maybe you can take six months time. Some of the projects you can do it as and when time permits. So what I'm going to do is that at the end of this session, I'm going to put a um, Google form where you can select from these things. So say 10 people select music app, then that 10 people can come together. I will share the email ID and phone number. Um, recently, I was talking to an IT professional. He was telling we should have a team which does front end. A team consisting of members. One will be responsible for front end. One will be responsible for uh, uh, back end. Somebody is responsible for marketing. Somebody is responsible. Uh, somebody is a team lead like that. So you you have a pool of people who are expert in their own domains working for a particular project. So in that way you learn about team management, uh, you stick to deadlines, uh, you, you understand the customer requirements. There should be a testing person also who has to test the app or software. So if 10 people come together, it's left up to you whether you want to split your work or work on a thing. The thing is it should be effective, quick and a reliable work. And I will not. I'm not going to follow up. I will never do follow up. I'm just giving the idea. If you're really sincere, I want sincere people working on this project. If you're really sincere, you give me update. You give me progress and I can give you suggestions. I cannot run behind students because the amount of work which I have to do at college level is considerably high. So if none of you are going to take the project, I have absolutely no problem. I'm not going to run behind people. You take a project, you become responsible, you execute the project. Don't think these are simple projects. It requires a lot of effort. Even if it is a simple project, I don't see any harm in duplicating the work, building knowledge and expanding that knowledge to some other project that you may come across some other time. See, I worked in industry. They also do the same work. 
Excel sheets work only. Excel sheet with Oracle database. Many, many, many people work with Excel sheet, some other custom made software for them. If you take Amazon, if you take Flipkart, you got anything, they are all going to work with basically one database and a, a tool which can present that data in different forms. That's all. So all these projects have to work on a database. And each might be requiring a different tool. You can find out what tool is appropriate for that, which is financially not burdening, which is not complex to learn. And then you can decide which one you want to work on it. So here you see um, 150 people actually registered, but only 26 people. I don't have any problem with this. Even if two students had come up, I would have explained the entire thing to them also. So after this, I want you to take up sincerely, if at all you are really looking into it. If if I am not able to give you a proper guidance, then I will connect you to people who know it. But in the beginning itself, I told you I am a layman. I am a customer. I can give you the requirements. You should find out the solution for me. That is what you are going to face when you are going to go to the company tomorrow. OK, a customer comes. He says the requirement and the company has to decide what tool to use, how to execute the project, what is the timeline, how many members should be doing there, who should be doing what, everything the company has to decide. That is what I want you to decide also. I hope uh, this session was useful and if sorry if I'm not giving you the right direction. At least you will have an idea of what kind of projects uh, colleges and schools will be requiring. Any any doubts or clarifications we want you can ask me. I'll just post the. Uh, um, you can. Apart from this software, you have anything else in your mind. You can just put it here uh, in others option and later on I will. Uh, go through it and we will decide on this. Anything else you feel like is important name, email ID, phone number and project interest. Anything else you want to tell I can add in this Google sheet and circulate. Should I put registration number so that year can be decided? I am presenting it uh, presenting it to second years, uh, third years because I want uh, it's not that one time you do the project and leave it. You have to take it up. Uh, people after using it, they will be coming up with uh, uh, some glitches or bugs. I want team to work on it on a long run. It should be there at least until you are in this college. You should be able to address these issues because when you roll out this project to somebody, uh, for example, advisors, they should not come up with so many problems. If they come up with problems, we should be able to fix it. So now the semester is coming in to end. Six months time we can take to do all the development and testing and all those things. <coughs> if if you're not able to do it also, it's fine. But at least try to work along these lines, work along similar projects so that you can use your knowledge wherever it is required. Any other any other thing you want apart from this field here, name, registration number, email ID, phone number, and interest project. If you have any other project in mind. You can just type it over here. I'll put one more, uh, uh, one more. Any other suggestions? I've already rolled out these projects to many of your seniors. Two people are working, and uh, I want more people to work on it. Any other things, suggestions you want to give? Any other queries you want to ask? You may please ask. You can unmute yourself and ask. What I'm going to do is once again for all the 150 people who registered, I'm going to send this uh, video uh, which uh, presentation along with the form. They can uh, decide whether they want to go ahead or not. Anything you want to ask me or any clarifications? Is any of the projects doable? Yes, sir. 
yes sir so once we decide on the team on which project then you can approach me i can give you further insights you can give your suggestions and implement it it's not that one way i tell you do this you do this i don't i don't well, i don't like it like that way you can have your own idea behind it how to do it etc in the chat box i will put the google form link if if you are really interested and you really want to sincerely work on it you can just do it just fill that form then i will connect all the people of the same project title then you can work amongst yourself in that way you will be more responsible there is more team involvement ideally there should be a project leader team members marketing team if required if you feel that any of any of this idea is marketable then there should be a marketing team too any other suggestions inputs clarifications okay then thank you so much for uh, joining the meeting i hope it would have